all here trying to make sense of some of the changes swirling around us. We need a consensus on how we can generate growth and sustain growth within countries and cooperation across countries to expand the economic space for all. We are all in Asia interacting, integrating, trading with one another. Our trade with China has become the biggest of our trading partners around the world. Bigger even than America, bigger even than Europe last year. It hasn't been so for many years, it is now. TPP is an ambitious deal. It's a deal which has strategic as well as economic benefits. Southeast Asia is there, Australia is there, so is Latin America. And one day the Chinese may want to join, the Koreans will also want to join, and we will have a free trade in the Asia Pacific. India has a lot of opportunity at the very basic level to generate very high levels of employment by, for example, to start with exploiting our natural resources. And the people have the hope that things are going to get significantly better. The Chinese geopolitical issues are so much in the forefront of, of everybody who's trying to run a global business. Understanding those and their impact, I think, are the, the key things. We have seen, in global terms, uh, an increase in geopolitical risk. And hopefully next year we might see a reduction. As Asia's growing middle class will consume more, demand for services such as education, health services, housing and financial security is set to grow. In the last four years in Asia, you've invested 15 times more money than we have in the United States in the consumption of natural gas. It's going to be one of the major driving force to increase the absolute percentage of gas in the energy mix. There's a wide misperception say simply fossil will always be less expensive than renewables. I think the Singapore summit really is unique in terms of the manner that's organized, the subjects that they choose, the speakers that they choose, and the peer group that is in the audience, I think makes it unique. There's a powerful group of global leaders, and both corporate business leaders, government policy makers. It's really the interaction with the other uh, attendees of the conference. The value is in meeting your customers, meeting uh, government and banking and finance officials, and really stimulating uh, uh, the ideas that you that you have. Okay. I found this summit extremely interesting. It's been well organized, uh, it's been succinct, and it's covered uh, both economic considerations, but also very interestingly and importantly geopolitical considerations. If you look at the Middle East and some of the tensions there, you look at the slow growth uh, arena in, in Europe, uh, you see the U.S. just beginning to come out of a difficult economic period. And you've got Asia, which is an engine uh, that, that's moving, that's thriving. And you've got uh, the exciting component of ASEAN beginning to come together. We have China and India both growing organically. And Southeast Asia benefiting powerfully from this growth. But on the whole, I think we have reasons to be bullish about ASEAN. I would expect over the next 50 years, Singapore to become even more important as a pivotal place, not just for Asia, but maybe even globally. <laughs>